All right, guys, we are in a Hornet today. I am a single ship, and I will be fighting two Chinese J-15s equipped with PL-12 Fox 3 missiles. Now, this allows them to fight on a peer-to-peer -peer level. Um, if we limited them just to the, the standard um, R-27 ERET loadout, they would be a very, very easy target for me. I'd be able to kill them easily in the Hornet. But when we give them the uh, Fox 3 capabilities of the PL-12s, um, they all of a sudden become a peer-to-peer -peer, and actually the advantage of the fight completely shifts into their favor as they now have fa Fox 3s and there's two of them, right? Now, we have this fight set up a little bit differently and that is that behind me is a carrier group and behind them is their carrier group, which means that both sides have SAM protection. The area in between these two battle groups is going to be the area where we're going to call the AO. As long as we stay in the AO, you know, it's fights on as normal. If somebody decides that they want to fall back to their SAM site, they can absolutely do that, but they forfeit the fight. So if somebody runs out of missiles, they don't have to die. They don't have to merge to die. You can just go home. You lose the fight, but at least you survive etc etc that's the uh, concept anyway it's experimental I don't know it might be a dumb idea but we're gonna try it for this video now you guys are probably also noticing by now on my HUD at the bottom it says AC 10 which means that I have brought 10 AMRAMs and that means I am basically a truck for AMRAMs <laughs> essentially I was like you know what there's two of them they carry a shit ton of missiles those J-15s they're gonna have Fox 3s. I need as many missiles as I can. I gotta keep at least one guy busy while I kill his friend and that means I'm gonna have to shoot a whole bunch of missiles at him. Now the big disadvantage with that is that my aircraft is very heavy now. The 10 AMRAMs are very heavy. They create a lot of drag and uh, it's gonna be a serious issue going into the fight. The Hornet's already kind of underpowered you know in relatively speaking when you compare it to an F-15 or an F-16 and we've talked many times in different videos how speed is life in a BVR fight the faster you are the harder you are to hit the more lethal you are so when you put all of these things together you know you can see I'm actually at a pretty major disadvantage here and there's really no reason why I should win this fight but I'm gonna try to put up a good fight and we'll see what happens so we're closing into the range at which I'm gonna fire here I'm going to give them multiple Fox 3s. Alright, so we are diving aggressively to get away from uh, any missiles they fired because I pushed right up to the, uh, to the MAR there. I was right on the edge of it. And so we are now diving and we're going cold. For those of you who keep asking, cold means nose away from the bandit. When I point my nose at them, I'm hot, okay? Right now I'm cold and I'm just running away from those missiles. I should be safe. I can literally see the missile launch off in the distance. And we're gonna go ahead and recommit here. I see them on radar. We'll lock up the lead guy. Not too worried about those missiles. Those are just uh, missiles that are pretty much dead from energy. I'm just getting their uh, radar picking me up. Alright. Playing this kind of safe at this point. They should be very aggressive because there's two of them. Uh, it would be very much in their benefit to play aggressively here. 13 miles, Fox 3, and we're off cold. I didn't manage to launch on the, the second guy, but he was a little bit further back, so I'm not too worried about him. But that means that when I go cold, I can't stay defensive too long. I gotta basically turn around and recommit ASAP. Because that second bandit's free to push in on me right now. He has no missile fired at him. And basically any of these scenarios, if I don't fire a Fox 3, I'm going to die. Because I'm 
just going to allow one of these guys to push in on me. So it's really, really important that I keep giving them missiles and things to worry about. We're going to go ahead and defend a little bit more just to be safe. Those PL-12s can be a bitch. Alright, we'll go ahead and recommit here. Looks like one guy's trying to flank off to the left. I can actually visually see him. I don't know if you guys can see him. Fox 3. I hope that YouTube compression doesn't kill it, but I can barely see him because they're white too. J-15s are painted white, so they blend in really nicely. Alright, so we foxed on, I believe, the lead bandit, so I'm just going to go ahead and go cold for a bit here. And I really don't like fighting at low altitudes like this, but I don't have much of a chance if I go up high because there's two of them. It'll be even harder for me to uh, keep track of them. Fox 3 on that guy. And I think that's the bandit off to the left. That one should hit him right in the face. So he's going to enjoy that. Continuing cold. Something just hit the water behind me. I think it was uh, one of the enemy missiles. There's another one. There's missiles just falling all over into the water here. <laughs> it's a bad day to be a fish. And so we're going to go ahead and recommit here. And I think I see something. Okay, something hit the water over there that looked like uh, that aircraft that I shot at. So I think we're down to just one on one. This guy's way close. He pushed way inside the mar. And I'm off cold. I'm gonna hit him for sure. But I don't think I can escape his missile. Oh shit. Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I should just eject, dude. That was a four or five mile launch. That missile's gonna hit me for sure. This is very bad, very bad, very bad. Oh god. All right, guys, let's do our TACV review. We have uh, the blue battle group and we have the red battle group over here. And so as I explained in the video, you could fall back to, you know, your SAM coverage here, which is your ships. And if you enter that bubble, though, um, you're out. You forfeit the round. You go home safe, but, you know, you're out of the round. And we're going to take a tolerance on that. Like if you just kind of cross the bubble, you know, we're going to let it go, but if you purposefully try to go back to your fleet, then, you know, you survive. Now, nobody made it home, so I guess that doesn't really matter. But uh, let's do our quick little tack view review here. So we have Royal Waffles and we have uh, Mike Romeo here. Big thank you to both of you for helping out with this video. Um, we'll fast forward this a little bit just to get to the action. 
and so let's look at speeds okay we have Mike here setting at Mach 0 0.97 okay ideally you want to be at least Mach 1 okay because when that missile comes off it has to break the sound barrier that results in a bunch of drag and all that other stuff and you don't need that so um, just you need to be above Mach 1 okay Royal Waffles over here sitting at a Mach 1.28 so almost 1.3 so good for him and they're also sitting at much higher altitudes than me. They're sitting at 34,000 feet while I'm stuck down here at 23,000 feet. And so that gives me quite a disadvantage. And I'm sitting at Mach 1. It's about as fast as I can go. And uh, that's very not good. I don't like being that slow in a BVR fight. Um, we have our first PL-12 launch at about 22 miles. Oh no, we have quite a few from Mike over here. He's firing at 34 miles and kind of a, a far launch given his mock speed. Actually, he got up to, nope, he's still Mach 0 0.96. So because he's so slow, those missiles are kind of not really a danger. Um, the missile's gonna come off at the same velocity as the aircraft. Obviously, objects in motion stay in motion, that whole concept. And right here, I have a 21 mile launch from uh, Royal Waffles, he then begins uh, a left offset, and I fire at 20 miles, 22 miles, two missiles TWS on both of them. And the reason I have to do this is because if one of them doesn't get a missile, he has a free entry. He can just push in all the way and just kill me. So TWS or TWIZ is very important in this situation. Um, we have our Fox 3 launches. I'm going to dive and go cold. Um, because these missiles are quite dangerous. I got really inside the MAR there. Uh, minimum abort range. And look at that. Good defeating of those missiles. Flew underneath them. Recommitting quickly. Okay, I can't spend too much time defensive. Um, you can see that my two missiles, let's see what impact they had on our bandits. So my two AMRAMs are coming in. Let's go ahead and hide labels. And so we have my two AMRAMs coming in. It actually forces both of these guys defensive. And Royal Waffles almost dies here to this AMRAM. Comes very close to him. Very risky, very lucky to be alive. Almost died in the first two seconds of that fight there. Um, Mike... Mike was always safe because he was a little bit further back. However, that missile still does an okay job trying to get to him. So that's nice. And it forces him extra defensive, which I like. Um, here we got Royal Waffles recommitted quickly at 12 miles to me. I'm on the deck, so 12 miles is... Uh, eh. It's okay, 12 miles is good in terms of range, um, but I'm already off cold. So you see at 10 miles the Mar, I'm already out of there. Um, he is also out of there with a second missile launch, and I got a missile off at him because I need him to piss off, right? I'm going to send this to make him turn away from me. If I don't send this missile, he can just keep coming forward, right? And so I'm running away. We have his two missiles tracking here. Um, firing two missiles so close together, it's uh, it's risky because they can actually proxy fuse on each other as they start getting close to the bandit. They'll blow up, they'll blow each other up. Um, or, here's the thing, when you fire two missiles so close together, if I defeat one, I defeat the other one. Right, so you really want to give some separation to firing your missile. You're going to fire one. If you want to fire a second one, wait three seconds if you really want to, and then fire it. Um, so you can see just by defeating one missile, I defeated both there. And recommitting, once again, I only managed to pick up uh, Royal Waffles here. And actually, I didn't pick, I saw them both, but I picked him up, and Mike was a little bit further back, so I didn't prioritize him as a target. And notice how I can tell Mike's here, and Royal Waffles here, I can see that on my SA page, my Situational Awareness page, and my radar, right? So when I'm turning defensive, I'm turning away from Mike, okay? Because he's the bandit I didn't fire at. So I need to turn away from him, all right? I'm not going to turn into him. 
so that when he realizes there's no missile fired at him, he can just recommit and kill me, right? I'm going to turn away from the guy that I didn't shoot at. And so he's got a missile off, I got mine off, forces him defensive, and right here I get, so right here, when I'm recommitting here, uh, my priority is that J-15 that I didn't shoot at, right? Because I know he's realized that by now and he's trying to come in and try to kill me. This guy's still busy with my missile, and so I'm going to come back and I'm going to look for him, right? And I catch him at seven miles, trying to push me as expected. Fox 3 instantly turn cold, right? And boom, one dead bandit, and his missile does not get me. Okay, now, a couple of things we want to talk about here. Okay, notice how I lock him up off boresight, right? I don't just point my nose at him. This gives me less angles when I'm turning away. You know, I have less angles to make up so I can get away faster. I'm going to fire that missile and I'm already turned out of there. You see that? And Mike here makes the same mistake that Alpha Gator made in the last video. Okay. RWR blind spots. Okay, I'll explain it one more time for anybody who didn't see that video. Every aircraft in DCS has a 45 degree RWR blind spot right here. Okay, 45 up, 45 down. Four and a five, four and a five. Okay, any missile coming from here or here, he will not hear it. Okay, you need to point your wings in the direction of the bandit in order to receive your RWR notification. And therefore, right here, as he believes that the missile's off him, and he begins recommitting, that missile's still coming right at him, but from the top of his head. So he can't hear it. And more than likely, right around, he, I don't even know if he heard it at all, honestly. That missile looks like it hit him right in the face, which is probably why there was no ejection. Because I believe that pilot was killed. So, that's one dead bandit right there. And that brings us to the next guy. Royal Waffles here, closing in, turn nose hot for me. I'm very aware of that, so I'm going to turn away from him. I actually saw this missile launch, so I turned away. And I come to recommit, and I fire a missile at him. I knew where he was. I could see him very faintly off in the distance. Locked him up with the uh, helmet-mounted sight and fired my Fox 3. Once again, notice off bore sight. Okay, if I point my nose at him... I'm wasting time to turn all the way around to get away, right? If I, and at this range, it doesn't matter. It's five miles. The AMRAM has more than enough energy to do the turn for me and hit the bandit. Yes, making your missile turn will kill its speed, but not at these distances. It won't matter, okay? And it's much more safe than pointing my nose at him. So I do that and I fly away. Now, Let's talk about this. Way too aggressive for the kill. Okay, right here at nine miles, Royal Waffles has his missile off. There is no reason to be coming inside the Mart like this. Okay, like why? Why keep pushing in, bro? Okay, like way too adamant for that kill, target fixation. You just cannot take a chance that, oh, I hope my bandit won't turn around to kill me. Okay, because you know what happens when somebody realizes that you're that close and your missile's gonna hit them? They're gonna turn around and go for a mutual kill. Okay, they're gonna try to kill you. They've accepted that they're gonna die and they're gonna take you with them. All right? You should really be turning away and respecting the Mar in this situation, and this is why because you're going to die. All right. Now, right here is actually a good example of why 2v1 situations are so difficult. I could not keep track of both of these guys at the same time, you know? I kill one bandit, and by the time I figure out what the hell's going on, the second bandit's already on me inside the Mar, right? So, 
the point I'm trying to make is just because you respect the Mar doesn't mean the other guy is going to respect the Mar. You know? So, something to think about there. You, sometimes you just you can't help it. You know, you're just in a situation where the other guy did not respect the Mar. And maybe he was going for a merge. Who knows, right? Who knows what that guy's trying to do? But uh, sometimes you just find yourself in that situation. And one dead bandit. Unfortunately, that missile also catches me. I'm interested in what speed it hit me. And if I had a chance to get away. Okay, it hits me at Mach 1.8. And I'm nowhere near that. So one of the problems with the Hornet being so slow is this right here. It just can't outrun anything. And uh, splash one, there's our rejection. All right. Um, late ejection here, actually. Didn't see it on the video, but uh, he's dead. <laughs> that's, a, that's an ejection into the water. So that's one dead pilot over there. So yeah, that's the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Big thank you to Roll Waffles and Mike for helping out with this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.